One of the interesting things that seems to be happening in our culture is the way a lot of non-religious people who claim to be atheists are beginning to value religion um, as carrying important practices and disciplines, um, elements that we would lose much from abandoning. I mean, Alain de Botton's book Religion for Atheists is, is about the fact that coming together to celebrate human community and listen to um, uh, little homilies that encourage you to be a better neighbour um, or to be s learn how to be silent and to sit still. All of these are very good values carried by religion. Um, and if you throw religion over completely, you throw out much good as well as a lot of nonsense. And I think one of the ways in which you can maintain a relationship with religion, even if you yourself don't believe in a supernatural God and don't think religion came to us, as it were, in a kind of transcendental package from the other side, you know, as it were, um, uh, fired into human history from uh, superhuman reality, even if you think it's something human that we have constructed, there's much good in it uh, and a good way to use it is to see it as a work of art. Most of it's stories um, and the technical term for it is the word myth and a myth is one of the ways humans have devised to talk about meaning and value uh, and truth and all of those important, intangible, abstract ideas to put them into a story. The classic example is the story of human discontent, which is expressed in the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They're not content with paradise, uh, they want paradise plus or paradise double plus. Um, now, that is not about an Aboriginal couple uh, four, five, six thousand years ago in a garden near the Euphrates it's happening as we sit here in this living room in Edinburgh. It's happening around the corner. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, a story about the human experience of discontent and wanting that which you're not able to have and going after it and finding it and then finding you've, you've got ashes in your mouth. It's as old as the human experience of discontent. And one of the ways that I use these great myths, these great stories, is not to ask if they're true or false, but to ask, are they living or are they dead? Are they still carrying a punch? And when I read the story of Adam and Eve and there are lots of other great stories um, in the Bible, in both the Hebrew bit of it and the Christian bit of it, they're about me. They're about my discontents, my lusts, my fears, my failures to forgive. Um, and if you start listening to them in that way, the way you'd listen to a great opera or read a great novel, uh, this is artistry and it's the way these, these spiritual geniuses have put the human experience into story, into word and listening to them delivers enormous truth and honesty to it. I, I, was, I was at church yesterday and uh, I heard the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, probably the most famous little story Jesus gave, uh, which again is about human greed um, and lack of discipline, uh, the scapegrace, younger brother, and, and the good but um, mean-spirited older brother, and the loving father in the middle who loves them both and forgives them both their mean, one his, his, his libertinism and the other his, his lack of spiritual generosity and I was comforted by that story because I, I've in disciplines in my own life I've needed forgiving and this story is telling us that th the only way that we can manage our, our flawed humanity and the fact that we go on hurting each other is to learn to forgive, to understand the mistakes we make but not to be locked in them permanently. The tragedy of behaving badly towards each other is the way we, we can destroy a, a person's, a child's whole future. An abused child is locked in the abuse. And until that child is somehow lifted from that, either because it's, it's apologized to or it's helped to move on into the future, it means that the way we offend each other locks us into the past. Forgiveness unlocks 
the abuse and gives us back the future. And religion is full of stories like that. So you can use this stuff. You don't have to think it comes from outer space to think this is about me. Um, and that's, I go to church because it continues to challenge me to, to, to crawl towards a better kind of humanity. And it would work for anyone.